Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show and this time I'm out on the water but it's not the sea. It's fresh water, I'm on the River Thames, I've had an invite to come and look at one of the polar craft boats. Now, some of you pike fishermen might remember I did a little test on a polar craft boat, I don't know, about a year ago and I got lucky, got a big pike on it. But <clears throat> do you know what, I, although they're good and they're very strong and they're tough, I didn't like the fact that they got those benches, you know, the seats all the way through them so every time I wanted to go and say get the landing net or the camera or the sandwiches you clonk 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 or you get to the end oh you want to go back to the boat clonk clonk you're back here you know I didn't like the idea of it I've always liked what we call a Boston whaler type walk around centre console anything that gives me a bit of floor space now this one's up at Lyndon Lewis Marine at Shepparton and it's a different one and I've well I've got to say this is a totally different animal altogether it's still the regular Polar Craft aluminium boat, good, strong, sturdy boat, but it's got some good features with it as well. Let me show you what I mean. Now this one is the V1578. I've no idea what it means. That's just the model. Contact Linda Lewis if you want to see what they are. But let me just give you an idea what it's like. Normally you've got those benches across the boat. Now, if you can imagine the aluminium hull, it's like this, it's curved, and here's the boat's hull, it's curved like that. You couldn't just have it as a hull, it would all be moving in and out. So they have to have the benches to retain that rigidity. I wouldn't want to say that after too many beers. The rigidity. However, what they've done now is they've, well, they haven't cut through here, they just haven't built those seat partitions across there. Even better, they've made compartments either side, a complete walk through here, loads and loads of space, various holes. Now this is good for people like me that want to put dry gear in it, because remember, you are in an open boat, whether you take this one on fresh water, on a, on a river, on a lake, out the sea, estuaries, if it rains, you're going to get wet. So you want to take wet gear with you. There's no point in having wet gear in a boat, and it gets wet. Put it in the storage. It comes with a live bait well. But one of the other features that I think is really good, before, where's the V-hull, because the you know, V-hulls will go fast, and they're quite stable boats, no question about that in rougher seas. But the V-hull, they were a bit clonky, I didn't like them that last one I fished in it. It made a lot of noise, you know, as a fisherman, I didn't like it. Some of them come with a sort of, like a basey material on it, I don't know. But this is brand new material. So what they've done, this is what I've been told by the Lyndon Lewis people, where they've taken those, if you like, just benches or seats out there, they've got to retain that strength in there, they've got to make it rigid. And they do that by putting the flooring in there. So that's great. Not only is it strong, it gives me a nice big area and it's like a non-slip, I can't tell you what it is guys, it's like a carpety sort of stuff, rubberized carpet. Yeah, it's really, really cool. I like it very much for me and all countersunk screws, you're not going to count. You know, if you're on there with your wife or your girlfriend or whatever with some kids and they're barefoot, you're not going to stub your toes hopefully on all these screws, they're all countersunk, a bit down tight. Let's come back here, show you a little bit more about it. Okay, at the back here, there's an area there you can put stuff on, you know, drop your lures, put your tackle box there, so if you're running the boat and you're trolling, you can put your tackle box like this, it's not going to fall over, look, right there, right where you want it. It's got a compartment here, looks like you can put another auxiliary battery in there if you want to run auxiliaries, I guess, from all the, all the um, uh, switches down here, and you've got the um, uh, outlet there, so you know, if you're out at night, you want to put extra lights on, you could do that. Spare dry compartment here. Now then, if you're not going far, you might be tempted to take one small, you know, I call it five gallon. So you're going to take one tank with you and you want to back up one, you're going to put it in there. Don't put fuel in a completely sealed compartment because the vapours come out and they're going to be dangerous. There's a sticker on there, so it should be idiot proof, but if you've got an old boat, it's just a tip there, a totally awesome tip. Do not put petrol tanks in areas that are not fully ventilated. Big problem, big bang. Over the other side. Now, this has got one big one in here. It's full of junk. Right, this one has got a nice big dry storage area. So I've got all my bits and pieces. And I've also got, uh, well it's a boat, it's a boat test and I look at a boat really, but I've got scales and a weigh bag. I don't know what to say. Well we'll test the boat first, shall we? Okay. Now this one's got allowance, so uh, this is a four, well, I suppose it's four inch that way, I don't know, maybe it's that way, uh, Elite 4 HDI. Now what this does, I've got uh, a seven inch touchscreen model, but what they also come with is a memory card in here, 
this is a portable unit, okay, but it's rechargeable portable unit, which is dead handy. Because you can fold it up, put it all away, and everything. But more important, you can record your sonar recordings and also your structure scan on there. Take it back, take the card out, join Insight Genesis, put the card into your computer, send all the details to Insight Genesis, and they will send you back complete contour mapping, any structures on the bottom. You can then reprogram it into here, or just play with it and look at it on your computer. We're going to run this for a little bit up in the weir pool, just see if anything comes out on it. I mean, I've only been up there once in my life before, but I sort of know where a couple of deep holes are. And as I say, a good portable unit like this, that's all you need on an open boat, a small portable Lawrence unit. Okay, in the centre, where you'd normally have that centre seat, straight walk through, two more storage, dry storage compartments here. This one is just a regular one. This one looks to me, with a plug there, it could be a long bait well. It is in fact being used today as a dead bait well. Now listen, we're looking at the boats, I'm coming on the river, I'm coming on the water, I'm going to bring some bait. Don't tell anybody. We've got to squeeze five or ten minutes in somewhere. Up at the bow, anchor storage compartment. Okay, a couple of pointers here, which I think are again plus pointers, which I haven't seen. I've got the Yamaha, but I haven't seen this thing. And I'm looking around the side here for the gear lever. Like an idiot thinking, this is a really senior moment, Graham. They all have gear levers. Why is, why is it missing on here? It's not. They've got a curved one on the front here. And that goes in reverse, neutral, forwards. Now, it seems a bit strange. It's on that driving shaft there. You know, it seems a bit strange to start with. But it is quite handy that I haven't got to keep, if I was fishing in a fishing situation, I haven't got to keep stretching back. Stretching back all the time can be a bit of a pain, stretching back, clunking it in and out of gear. This, with my hands on the tiller, my rods hopefully are in rod holders out from the side. I could just do that, just like changing gear in, out see where I'm going. Also, you know, you've got a nice rigid uh, setup with the tiller, tiller arm here, so it's not flying all over the place. And even better, it's got an adjuster here, right down close here, you can see there's a nut there to give you the tension. And that can be adjusted so that if you're trolling, there you go. You can fix it exactly how you want it. Now the Yam here is a 20. I found it sent a stall out just when it was going very, very, very slow. So of course what you do is you just adjust on the start, adjust it a little bit over start, and just increase this little nut here so it makes it stiff, problem solved. Well, it's not a problem, is it? It's just that I like it like that. I like it to, when I pull an engine, I want it running a little bit fast. You know, in case it's windy, I'm drifting near rocks, who knows? You know, I don't want it going boom, 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 boom. I'd like, like to have it humming. So as soon as I'm ready for gear, bonk, in gear, I'm away. Well, that's the boat. That's 1578. If you want to learn any more about it, come and see Russell at Lyndon Lewis Marine, Shepparton. I'm sure we'll talk to you about it. I'm sure we might even let you go out and test it with you on the, on the river if you want to see what it's like. Well, for me, a couple of other points I think I really need, maybe a spray or dodger at the front, which is like a baby's canopy that comes up on a pram that could come up on a triangle. I know you can get them, probably get one made. If the spray comes over and you're on coastal waters or you're in an estuary and it chops up, the spray is gonna come over the side. It will at least keep you really, really dry out there. On the subject of drying, what about a little tube down here to take a big coarse fisherman's, freshwater fisherman's umbrella that will keep you dry as well. For me, that's enough talking. I could do a little bit of boat testing, a little bit of sounder recording. We're gonna see what we can find up at, yes, Shepparton Weir but they don't know I've got some baits in there. For me, let's hope this thing starts. Yamaha, one pull. Let's get up there, give this boat a test. If we've got five or 10 minutes, I assure you a bait is going in the water. Let go of it. Fish was on, chew the life out of the herring. 
I would say a small one. And there is the cut marks. You can just see little teeth marks there. So a small fish, but at least there's life up here. Guys, we had another take on a herring. I've got, I've got one bait left after this. And my hooks are right at the front. That's all the only bait I could buy. But we've only come up on this boat test. We have a few casts. We might get lucky. Probably lose this one. I'm going to try and strike now. Might have dropped it. I don't think it's going to be good. John, oh, oh, please stay on, just for the camera. We only bought one fish on a boat test. Don't be the bad old fish now, I'll take your mind. Thank you, look at it. Floats up. Yeah, he's not a big fish. You do. The herring is hanging out of his mouth. I've got some snags down there I've got to watch as well. One to right where he's going. Totally awesome strike again on a boat test. Oh yeah, it's not bad. It's thin fish, like a summer fish. Here we go, guys. Right. Strangling yourself. So lucky there, it's had a big herring, just so you see it. There's the herring, and it, fell, it just fell off the hook. It just fell off the hook. I'll bring it up so you can see it. I guess the fish about, I don't know, what are you thinking? It's about nine pounds, eight pounds, something like that. A typical thin summer fish there. Greedy. Well, it wasn't really, because it should have had that right down the hatch. But, I tell you, with one bait left, I think I was lucky. Let's get it back. That's Chris and the old polar craft boat as well. Success in every packet. So there you can see, my problem is I'm using my Sprat twitching rig with the VB hook at the front, uh, the single hook at the front, the VB there. So, I've got to let the pike grab it here and turn it to get that hook inside his mouth. I was very lucky, so a big bait you can get a small pike taking this, but it's going to take forever to swallow it. When you strike, you're going to get all pin marks back there. There's no way around it. I've had to put two shot on to allow to get it down in the current, and that's a jumbo herring to use for pike. I would not ordinarily use this for anything but ledgering for big pike in a lake on the bottom but I'm trying to twitch it round with the float here just to get something on this boat test. We lucked out with that. I'll probably find this one cast straight off the hook. 